<coughs> so we're on Ayin Bey Zamed Aleph. Um, we're dealing with this Mishnah, which talks about a Gentile purchasing wine. And the issue is that if he handles the wine before the purchase is consummated, so then I'm not allowed to benefit from the sale because he's already tainted it because he's made it into Yainessa. So what I need to do is I need to make it his property before he physically handles it so that it's kosher wine that I'm selling to him, not Yain Nesach wine that I'm selling to him. That was the whole theme of the discussion in the Gemara. And the Gemara had concluded from it, the previous discussion, that an act of Meshicha done by a Goy is a form of Kenyan, is a form of transaction. Now we're talking about something else today. And really the issue is, and I just want you to just pay close attention to what I'm about to say. The issue at hand is nothing to do with Jew versus Gentile per se, but is an issue of when a transaction is enacted, but there's no stipulation of price in the transaction, is that a legally binding transaction? So this is real, you know, this has real legal applications, right? So I, I agree to sell you my motorcycle, Shloimi, and we shake on it, but we haven't stipulated a price. Am I legally bound to sell it to you? Or do we say that since no price was stipulated, it's an open-ended bargain and, or open-ended agreement, and therefore it's not legally binding? So let's take a look now. It's the fifth line in the Gemara. Hahu gavra da'amrle lechavre i mazbinana la laha ara lach mazbinana la. So Ruvain turns to Shimon and he says, listen, I have this piece of property. I'm not selling it. But if I ever do sell it, I agree that I will sell it only to you. They make a Kenyan to seal that agreement. Okay, that's what Rashi says. So this is not just the nasmach, the not just like empty words. It's a real Kenyan that they make. So, Azul Zavna Le'ina So Reuven went ahead at some time later and ended up selling it to Levi, not to Shimon. So Amr Rav Yosef Kanakamas. So Rav Yosef says, Shimon has a legal case. He can sue him in Basin and say, you got to sell it to me. So Amr Le'abaye Vahalo Pasak. But Abaye objects to that, and he says to his Rebbe, how can you say that his agreement with Shimon was legally binding when there was no stipulation of price? So, How do you know that when there's no stipulation of price, it's not a legally binding agreement? Ditnan, because the Mishnah says, HaMocher yeno lo'ovi kochavim pasak ad shelo madad damav mutarim, madad ad shelo pasak damav asurim. He says, because look at the Mishnah. What did the Mishnah say? It says that if the stipulation on price, that's what Pasak means, we agreed on the price and then the Goy handles the wine. So the agreement on price seals the transaction. And therefore, when the Goy is handling the wine, it's already his wine. And therefore, I'm allowed to benefit from the sale. But if we didn't yet stipulate on price and the Goy handled it first by, doing, by pulling it or, or t- taking hold of it, whatever it was, so then, he's, I'm selling him the Ayin Esach. I'm not allowed to benefit from it because since there was no stipulation of price, there was no legally binding transaction. So you see that stipulation of price is a legal de- criterion for transactions. My Haviyalah. So the Gemara says, so what's the upshot? So the Gemara says, my Haviyalah, kidekamrinan. What kind of question is that? We just told you. You can see clearly from our Mishnah that without a stipulation of price, there's no transaction. So the Gemara answers, Dil mechumra di'ai nesach shiny. No, our, our thinking is that maybe only when it comes to yai nesach that we're so machmir that we say that there's no legal transaction without stipulation of price. And that's why, the wine, that's why I can't benefit from the sale. But maybe in other cases where we're not dealing with the chumra of yai nesach, the transaction is legal even without stipulation of price. And that's the gray area that we still have. Toshma the Amar of Ibi Bar Abin Uv the Hava Be Rav Chista Rav Chista Be Rav Huna O Pashte Mehod did not. So come and listen. Rav Ibi Bar Abin said there was once a situation that came up in Rav Chista's base medrash. Rav Chista brought the issue to Rav Huna, and Rav Huna was able to answer the Shaila from the following Bryce, the Detanya Moshe Chamor of Upol of Yichnisin Lesoch Beis O Bein Pasak Ad Shelo Madad O Bein Madad Ad Shelo Pasak Lo Kana O Shnei Yichon Lachzer Bohen. So the first part of the Bryce, it teaches us an important halacha as far as transactions go, that if I am taking delivery of goods and the seller is shipping them to me, but he's shipping them to me via, let's say, a, a donkey, 
uh, like the, the goods are laden on the back of the donkey, or the workers are, bri- are carrying the goods, even if they come into my house, so long as that donkey has not been unloaded or the workers have not put the item down on the floor, my, ha- my property cannot be cone of that property, so the, the goods. And so therefore, even if they came into the house already, but as long as the donkey has not been unloaded, there's no legal transfer, there's no legal transaction, and therefore either party can go back on the deal. And it makes no difference, even if price was stipulated, you can go back because there's no mechanism of transaction that's taken place. However, park on vichnis and l'soch beis, so pasak at shalom adad ein shnei michom lachzer bahen, madad at shalom pasak shnei michom lachzer bahen. However, here's where, the, here's, where, here's where it becomes crucial. What happens if the, the goods were unloaded from the donkey's back, and then the goods were brought into my house? So then the Bryce says it depends. If price was already stipulated, so then my property can, is automatically going to be Kona, those goods, as soon as they're deposited on my property. Because it's called a Kenyan Chatzar. I can be Kona through my property, by the ob- items resting on my property. But if there was no stipulation of price, then even if the goods are deposited on my property and I'm using the proper mechanism of Kenyan, it doesn't work because without stipulation of price, there's no legal transaction. So that really proves our point. So here's now a slightly different case. Ruvain turns to Shimon and says, I have this property, I'm not selling it, but if I ever do sell it, I hereby agree to sell it to you for 100 zuz. And they shake on it, they make a kinyan. Fine. Sometime later, Ruvain went to sell and sold it to Levi for 120 zuz. So, Amar Rav Kahana, Kana Kama. So here you can't say there was no deficiency of price stipulation because the price was stipulated. So therefore, Rav Kahana sounds like he's right. He says, listen, Shimon can take you to court and sue you to sell it to him for 100. So, Maskif for Rav Yaakov Minahar Pekod, Hai Zuzi Ansu, the Hilchasuk Rav Yaakov Minahar Pekod. So Rav Yaakov Minahar Pekod, the Gemara says, we paskin like disagrees. And he says that it was the money that forced him. Now, what do we mean by that? What we mean is, is that Ruvain said to Shimon, if I agree to sell it, and in his mind he's saying, in parentheses, for fair market value, it's worth 100 zuz. If I ever agreed that I'm going to sell it, I'll sell it to you. I won't sell it to anyone else. But a guy came over to me. I wasn't ready to sell it. But he gave me an offer I couldn't refuse. Made me an offer I couldn't refuse. Right? So, right? so because of that, it's not that he wanted to sell it. It's, it's that he didn't want to sell it and he still sold it. So this was not a fulfillment of the condition. The, con- oh, the condition that he made with Shimon was, if I want to sell it, yeah. then it's I will sell it to you. It's in Cork, they sold it but, it, but here he sold it not because he wanted to sell it, but because he didn't want to sell it, but he got an offer he couldn't refuse. It's a Korkha, they're arguing. Right? Yeah. But right, right for a first refusal, you have to come to him and say, look, I have an offer for 120, Matt, but I'll give it to you. But that wasn't the stipulation. That's Rabbi Yaakov the Minahar Pekot said. The, the, the deal was not that if I get a better offer, I'll Come give you first rights of refusal. Yeah. It was that when I'm ready to sell, I will sell it to done. you. He wasn't ready to sell, but he just he couldn't re- he couldn't turn down the offer. He had no pro- he had no option. So that's the way that we look at it, and therefore uh, Shimon can, does, has no legal recourse. Okay, Amr loy kedushaimi bitlasa filu tremi gav tlasa, but keda amri bitlasa ad the amri bitlasa. Okay, so now the Gemara says like this: Ruvain turns to Shimon and says. When it comes time for me to sell, I will sell it only to you. They make a Kenyan. Now, let's say the stipulation is, we'll get it properly appraised, and I'll sell it to you for the appraisal price. Mm -hmm. If he says, as it is appraised by three, what he's implying is, is that applying the laws of Bastin will get it appraised. And therefore, how does Bastin work? Works by majority rule. So even if just two people say it's worth 100, and the third guy says it's worth 120... I still agree. By Mamanus. By Mamanus. Yeah. We go by majority, and you have to sell it for 100 to Shimon. That's really the stipulation. However, if he doesn't say Kiddushaymi Bitlasa, but rather he says Kiddushaymi Bitlasa, so that means that I want three to evaluate it. What he means to say is I need three independent corroborations of its value. And if I don't get a full three experts confirming its value, I'm not going to sell it to you until I get... Or he means a base in a five. 
No, no. So that's what Ra- Rashi says. No, he means to say I need I need a unanimous decision of three okay. that it's worth the hundred that that we're proposing they or whatever. Have to say the same thing. What? They all have to, say the same they all have to come up with at least that same minimum. And usually that's mm-hmm. the first result, only, so it's unusual. Right. right. Okay. Yeah. But no, no, even the fascists, you don't need a... a, a, a no, you don't need a unanimity. Kedushayimi ba'arba ad da'amri ba'arba v'kol shekein heicha da'amri le'ke da'amri ba'arba If, however, Ruvain stipulates that we'll get it appraised by four, so he's not implying that he wants to go according to the rules of Basin, where it should go by the majority, because if he meant rules of Basin, he would have said three. Why did he say four? Mm. He means to say four because he wants four independent corroborations of its value. So therefore, it makes no difference whether he says Kiddushayni or Kidda Amri. He means to say he needs four unanimous votes that it's worth that value. He's not value. talking about Basin. Because he's not talking about Basin. Mm. Now, Amalei Kiddushayni betlas of Asu tlas of Shamu, of Amalei Idach Leisu tlas Achrini de Kimlutfei, Amar of Papa Dinuhu de Ma'akev. So, what happens if he gets three, a basin of three? And the majority states that it's worth 120. So Ruvain says, okay, price is 120. Shimon says, no, I'm not happy with that basin. I think that basin is not qualified. I have a more qualified basin that knows real estate appraisals better, and I want them to take a look at it. So Rav Papa says he has a right to say that. So Maskef la Ravuna Bereda Rav Yeshua, mi maida hani kim luhutfei, dil hani kim luhutfei. Who's to say who's more expert on this local real estate market? That's not, he can't make that statement because it could go on ad infinitum. The bottom line is, is that uh, Ruven, the seller, has rights of defining the based in, and therefore, the Hilcha Sukkah Rav Huna Bereder of Yeshua, and that's the halacha. You Next. Can't just, you can't just keep going the you first three, and that's it. The first three? Yeah. And it seems like the seller has the right to define who this tribunal is going to be. It's not, that's what it sounds like. So next Mishnah, who, I mean, it's, he, it's got to be a basin. The question is, does it have to be a basin? Kavua, could it be, you know, uh, could a Zabla, maybe? Who knows? That's something to be discussed in the poskim. Next Mishnah. So now we're going back to the laws of Yayin Nesach in the Mishnah. A Jew is selling wine. And he's selling now the wine to a Gentile. So he's pouring out of his barrel into a smaller container that belongs to the Gentile. Typically, what would you do? You take a funnel. So he places the funnel in the container of the Gentile. The question is, at what point does the kosher wine become usher? When it hits the, con- the, the container of the Gentile, right? As soon as it hits the container. But the Mishnah now says, what's the status of the funnel? If the funnel has any residual liquid from the sale to the Gentile, and then he uses the same funnel to sell that kosher wine to a Jew afterwards, then he's ossered all of the Jew's wine. Now that doesn't seem to make any sense. Why should that be? The funnel never touched the container. uh, The the wine in the funnel never touched the container. Just have two funnels, and that's it. (laughs) You're right. You're right. A funnel, a Jew funnel. (laughs) but, But the question is... Why should this funnel be us, or if there's any res- like it basically says if the funnel has a rim to catch some of the wine, so therefore when he pours it out for the Jew, he's mixing it in with the wine that he sold to the Gentile, mm-hmm. it's us, but the, we don't know why it should be, because the residual wine in the funnel has not come in contact with the Gentile container, so we don't understand why. The Gemara is going to have to explain that. So, if a Gentile is pouring from one container to another, so only the, st- only the wine that is poured out into the new container becomes usher, but the stuff that remains in the original bottle or the original barrel is still mutter. Seems like that's the way the Rambam and Shulchan Aruch Paskin, but we tend to say that as soon as a Gentile pours a bottle of wine, not only the stuff that comes out is usser, but even the stuff that's inside is usser as well. That's, that's how generally we're machmir. But you have to go through the poskim. The Gemara now says, Tanan hasam, hanitzok v'hakatafra sumashka tofeach eno chibur lo letumah v'lo letahara, ha'ashboren chibur letumah letahara. This is a Mishnah in Maseches Taharos. And it's talking about what creates a connection for the laws of tumah. So if you have a stream of liquid, that is being poured, you're pouring liquid from a vessel, 
and gravity, through gravity, a stream of liquid pours down into another vessel. If, let's say, the contents of the bottom vessel are tame, and you've got a steady stream that connects it to the contents in the top vessel, that does not transfer tumah. And the same thing, an ashboren does not transfer tumah. It's connected, but it does not connect it enough to create a tumah connection. The ashboren is where you have a slope. So you have water running, or liquid running down a slope, and the, the, the liquid in the top does not become tame, even though there's a steady stream of liquid that is flowing down the slope into the bottom where the tumah is contained. And the third case is tofeach. You have two bodies of water, and the solid mass that is connecting the two bodies of liquid um, is moist, but it's not so moist it's moist enough that if you touch it, you feel moisture, but it's not so moist that if you were to take that finger that you just touched it with, you could get something else wet. It's mm-hmm. just tofeach, but it's not tofeach amanas lahat fiach. And that kind of connection does not create a connection between tumma uh, to render something else tummy. So that's the first statement of the Mishnah. So Amar of Huna, Nitzok v'katafras umashka tofeach hibro la'inyan ya'i nesach. Rav Huna then makes an independent statement and he says, uh, that that Mishnah was only addressing the laws of, of Tumah, but as far as Yayin Nesach, a stream of liquid, or a slope of liquid, or a tofeach, moisture connecting two bodies, does create a connection vis-a-vis Yayin Nesach, such that if I'm pouring kosher wine on the top, and there's a steady stream that connects it to a bottom vessel which contains Yayin Nesach, then all of the contents of the top vessel also become Aser because of that stream of liquid that is connecting the two. So, Amar le Rav Nachman le Rav Huna min alacha. Where do you get this from? Ilay memidit nan hanitzok v'hakatafras umashka tofech enu chir belo letumah velo letahara letumah letahara hu delo havichibor halaya inin yayin esach havichibor Maybe you're inferring it from the Mishnah itself that we just studied, which said that it's not a connection for tum and tahara, but the inference is that it is a connection for yayin esach. But wait a minute, ema seifa. But look at the second part of that self-same Mishnah. It says, mm-hmm. What is Ashboren? Ashboren is, I'm sorry, I, I think I accidentally told you Ashboren was a slope. That's Katafras. Ashboren is where you have a pool or a collection of water in a crevice in the, in the ground. Let's say you have a cleft in the ground. And even though there may be, it's cragged, and it may not be a solid connection, but there's enough connection between the different pockets of water that they're all connected together. So that is a connection for Tum and Tahara. So what are you going to tell me? Because it said it is a connection over there for Tum and Tahara. It's not a connection for other things, that it's not a connection for Yayin Esach. That doesn't make sense. Make up your mind. Is Yayin Esach more Chamer or more Mekel? So Ela Mihal Ekel Mishma Mina. So really, the reality is, is that you can't infer anything. The Mishnah is only talking about right. tumah; it's not talking about yain nesach at all. Okay, but now let's look at let's now let's look at our Mishnah. Tanan, not unless hamashpech umadad lesoch tzuluchiso shall obi kolchabim vechazum adal tzuluch tzuluchiso shall Yisrael im yeshbo akavas yain aser. So, look, what did our Mishnah say? That when you use the funnel to pour wine from the kosher wine container into the Gentiles container, any residual wine that's in the funnel becomes usser, such that if you use it for the uh, uh, sale to a Jew, you render his wine usser. So the question now is, So the question is, how did the residual wine in the funnel become usser? It never came in contact with the Gentile container, only the outside of the funnel touches the Gentile container, but the, the wine inside the funnel doesn't uh, come in contact. So it must be because there's a steady stream between the, the wine that's in the funnel and the, the bottom of the container of the Gentile. Yes, what did you want to say? There's a thing called capillary action, and that's uh, the, the, the basic law says that molecules tend to go to each other. You, even though it's coming down, you may have a very extremely minute going back up. It's, it's a, it might be possible. 
I, I, I hear you. I hear you. Um, I don't think that the Gemara reckons with that kind of consideration because you would need very precise instrumentation to even yes. measure such a thing. We're but that's not right. detectable to the naked eye. Mm. The Gemara generally works with the, with the force of gravity as the criterion, aren't which we, is what we're dealing with over here. Aren't we machmer even by Kli Rishon, uh, provisional? So certainly by you know, Inesic, we, we have a connection between, from the Kli Rishon, the Irui. Oh, I, I'm sorry. Irui Kli Rishon. Yeah. Of it. It's like you're taking, it's not no, just apples and oranges. You're taking like by... widgets and doodads, and you're Why? making you because one is one is a, a chemical exchange be, yeah. through heat. This we're talking about we're talking about iser vehetero over here as far as as far as uh, yain yeah, I mean, you, you, it's one thing to compare to a vitar. It's a metaphysical right. connection to yain yeah, and even there the Gemara says is the uh-huh. difference. So you're, here, you're talking, there's a real physical connection by Bischel, which doesn't exist by, by this, you're saying, but here's the metaphysics. It, it, but it's not only that. There's a, is a, the, 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 Morris talking about a cooking process through heat. Uh-huh. That's the connection that's created. Uh-huh. Okay, anyway. Uh-huh. Um, so anyway, so, so the Gemara says, what we're trying to prove from our Mishnah is that Nitzok, a stream of liquid, creates that connection. That's why the, the wine in the funnel, the residual wine in the funnel, is usser. So Tani Rabbi Chia Shepachsasutslichiso. Not necessarily. You know why the wine in the funnel has become usr, becomes usr? Not because of the stream, but rather because I left the funnel, I, the Jewish seller, left the funnel in yeah. until the level of wine in the Gentile container Actually, went up and touched the funnel itself. Funnel. It came in direct contact with the INSF. That's the reason yeah. why. Mm-hmm. So you can't prove it from the from our Mishnah. So then why don't you infer the opposite? If you're telling me that our Mishnah is only talking about where the level of wine in the Gentile container rose up and touched the funnel, yeah. so then why don't you infer from there that if it was not the case, and it was only a stream that between that connected the funnel and the bottom of the Kli, so then it would not be a connection. So can we infer the opposite from here? The Gemara says, "Lo pach sasot sulchiso tiv shalach da aser nitzok tiboy tiv shalach da aser kama nitzok tiboy." The Gemara says, "No. All I can infer from this Mishnah is what because the Mishnah is nondescript; it doesn't tell me whether the wine touched the funnel or not. The most that I can infer from here is is that the wine will be aser at least because it, it could be addressing a case of where the wine touched the funnel, the actual funnel." But we don't know what the Mishnah would say if it didn't, the wine level did not reach the funnel, and maybe they only came in contact through a stream of liquid. We don't know. It's silent on Nitzok. It's silent on Nitzok, exactly. So, Tashma, let's see if we can learn it from somewhere else. So, what it was the second case of our Mishnah, it was when a Gentile is pouring from, from container A to container B. So what did we say? That only the thing that so the the the, the original con, the contents of the original container are mutter. So what does that imply? De baini baini. As soon as the stream comes out of the bottle, it's going to be usser even before it hits the bottom the, the the other container. So it seems like what ha de baini baini usser. So what are we inferring? We're inferring that the reason why the stream that comes out of the bottle is going to be usser is because it's connecting with the other kli. And so through its connection to the other kli, the stream that hasn't even yet fallen into the kli is going to be usser. So that proves to us that a stream of liquid is considered a connection. That's what we want to prove. By Yainessa. It should go back right up if it's all connected. Why would it only be the So that's, Mark is asking the, the next logical question. That's exactly what the Gemara asks, Mark. Well, if that's the case and you want to, you're saying that a stream of liquid creates a connection, so then you should answer the contents of the original container also because it's all connected. Like we do today. So, well, that's what we do. But the reason we do it, I believe, and again, I'm just citing from memory, so forgive me if I'm mistaken. I think it's because a bottle is different because it's tra- transparent. Since the Gentile can see the contents of the bottle, we say that even the stuff that's in the original bottle is usser. 
because he can see it. It's different than a barrel. You it could be different from a barrel halacha. You can't see. Why did Rashi say here? Hamarin liol pi sakadati pi stralaski. Oh, because the only way that it makes sense is the Gemara's thinking is we're talking about a Jew pouring out from container A to container B, and container B is Usr, because it's a Gentile container. And what we're therefore suggesting is the reason why, thank you for pointing that out, the reason why the stream of liquid is Usr is because it's connecting through a stream to the bottom container. That's the Havamin of the Gemara. So the Gemara now says, Halo kasha the kamaktiv ketufe. So that last question that you raised is that if it's all becoming usr because of the bottom container through a, a solid stream, then why doesn't the contents of the original container become usr as well? The answer is, is because he's pouring it in spurts. In other words, he pours out a spurt, a, like a small stream, before it has a chance to hit the bottom of the forbidden vessel. He pulls back on the, on the top bottle. So he cuts off the stream, the stream, and only the bottom part becomes usser. So that would explain why the original yeah. container's contents do not become usser. Mm-hmm. But mikol makom nitzok chibur, but at least you can infer from here that the stream is connected to the bottom. But the Gemara says, v'li taimech eima seifa, es she'ira l'socha hu da'asr ha'debeni beni shari. So, but the next part of, the, of our Mishnah had said, only the contents of the new container or usser. Mm. But at that, from that you can infer that the stream on its way down into the container is mutter. So it's two contradictory inferences, and therefore, ele miha lekele mishma mina. And therefore you can't infer anything from that. So tashma. So let's look at it further. Hama'ara michavis labor. There's a brisa that says that if a person is pouring wine from a barrel into a pit, kilua chayorid misfas habor lamata usser. That the stream that is flowing down from the edge of the, of the barrel, downwards becomes usr. So doesn't that imply that nitzok is chibra, that the stream is a connection? And again, the havamina is that the barrel has kosher wine and the pit is filled with yayin nesach. So the Gemara says, Tir Gemara Rav Sheshis ba'obi kolchavim ha'ma'are da'asim ikocha. So this is where Rav Sheshis explains it, like we've been explaining it in the Mishnah, which is that we're not talking about a Jew pouring out wine from container A to container B, but the Gentile is pouring out the wine from container A to container B. And the reason why we're assuring the wine is not because it's coming in contact with the bottom container. The bottom container is also kosher. The reason we're assuring it is because any wine that comes out of the container is coming out of the container through the inertia of the goy, mm-hmm. and therefore with the, we're gozer that that is usser. So frak the gemara, iobi kochavim hamare, afilu gava de chavisa nami mitzar. So the gemara says, well then why don't you usser the stuff that's in the original container? It's therefore okay. it's it's coming out from the inertia of the goy. So koach iobi kochavim mid rabbanon who da usser who da nafak liberai gozru be rabbanon who da legavai lo gozru be rabbanon. So the Gemara answer is very simply, because it's only a takonas chachamim. Really, yayin nesach only becomes usher when a goy comes in physical contact. He's got to touch the wine. Uh, Here we're saying it's midarabonon, even if it's just moved by the goy. So the, the chachamim were only goes there if it leaves the actual bottle. But if it doesn't leave the bottle, the chachamim were not goes there on it, even though it sloshes in the original okay. container as a result okay. of the goy. You're saying today we take it one step further. Today we're bottom, more, yeah. even the stuff inside the bottle. Yeah, today, t- today, today we're generally it. more machm. Yeah. Okay, so let's so let's go. Amar lahu Rav Chizda lahano sabisa. So Rav Chizda said to a, a, a group of wine merchants, it seems. He says, listen guys, when you sell wine to an Ove Kochavim, we're going to be machmir. Just in case Nitzok is chibor, just in case the stream is a connection, what you should do is pour it out in spurts so that there'll never be a point where there's a steady stream between your containers and the Gentiles' containers. Another way he said of doing it, instead of pouring it out in spurts, is to toss it. In other words, you should stand at a distance horizontally from their container. So you know, you, you toss you toss the one. You got to be very skilled, otherwise you'll make a big mess. But, <laughs> why, not a third, uh, why not a third barrel or whatever? You could, but who's got a third barrel? You're thinking, what? You're going to go to Walmart and pick up a third barrel? They didn't have WalmarTs back then. Rabbi Black saying it's a plastic, so you'll just throw it out afterwards. Throw it out. We don't have. They didn't have disposable utensils. I mean. 
You know, you got to re- you got to put yourself put yourself two thousand years ago. They didn't have plastic. They didn't have Walmart. They didn't have disposables. Yeah. Can you imagine making Pesach back then? Oh my gosh. Anyway, so Amr lehu Rava lahano shefuchoi ki shavchisu chamer lo likar vobe kochavim lesayeh behadayichu dilma mishdalisu v'shadisu le alei v'kasi mikoach v'mikocha v'aser. And a similar halacha, Rava said to these guys who were hired to pour wine. He said, guys, when you pour the wine, don't allow a Gentile to assist you because even though you're the main guy pouring, there may come a time when you'll just let go for a second and he'll be the one who's the main pourer and then he's going to end up ostering all the wine that comes out. Now, So Alex is going to love this one. So the, the, case, the, the case is like this. We're dealing with a siphon, Okay. So you know the laws of physics involving a siphon. You suck, and then even though, it'll, even though the rubber tubing is above the water line, it creates a, a suction, a, and it creates a siphoning power, and it continues flowing, and you can actually drain an entire large container just with one initial suck. That's how the laws of, the laws of engineering work that way. So here's what a guy is doing. He's cre- he created a siphon such that with a rubber tube, so he's going to transfer the wine in one container to another container. All of a sudden, a goy comes along and touches the tip of the rubber tube where the wine is coming out. Rav has said, not only is the wine that he touched on its way out usser, but all of the contents of the original container are also usser as well, which is a big chiddush, because we wouldn't say that necessarily by nitzok if we hold that nitzok is not a chibur. So Amale Rav Papa Larav of Amale Rav Ada Barmasan Larav of Amila Ravina Larav of Bemai Benitzok Shamas Mina Nitzok Chibor. So are you? Can we infer from this that uh, the stream of liquid creates a connection to Aser the original contents? So the Gemara says no. Shiny Hasim the Kule Chamer Agishta Ubas Gishta Garir. No, not necessarily. It could be that the the yeah. siphoning power is is working with a stronger uh, amount of force than just gravity. A stream of liquid that's poured down from a higher container to a lower container is just working with the force of gravity. Mm-hmm. There it could be that that's not enough of a connection. But a siphon power, which is because of the air suction, mm-hmm. which is creating a much stronger force between, and therefore a much stronger connection between mm-hmm. the wine and the original container and the tip of the, the end of the rubber tubing, there only there, possibly only there was Rav Machmir, and not in the case of an open stream of liquid falling for the, from the force of gravity. Okay, so Amar Marzutcher Bereder Rav Nachman. The siphoning thing it started by someone sucking. Yeah, yeah did Jew or goy? It, a Jew, a oh. Jew, and then a goy came and touched oh, okay. the, the liquid that was pouring out. A goy would have sucked it, obviously. It's us, I don't know, not necessarily. As long as he, he you not know, shaking it or touching. It. If he never, it could be that if he never touched the, if the wine never actually touched his mouth, who knows? Maybe not. I don't know. But that's not the case of the Gemara's addressing. But usually when you siphon, you have to actually, you, right. some of the liquid actually hits your lips. You know, it's, they, they teach the guys in, uh, you know, when, I'm not going to, I won't be racial, I won't be racist. But, you know, there's a way to siphon gas. You know, when you want to steal gas, you stick a rubber tube and you suck. Yeah. You wait till the, the you taste the gasoline and then you, and then you put it in your car. You put it in your car. Just because of that original suction, Alex. After the share, we'll give you a whole <laughs> lesson about it. <laughs> Let's go on. Kenishkin in Shari, the honey mili de kadam pasak yisrael, the kadam pasak ovek kolchavim lo. So then the, the Gemara now says Kenishkinin. Mm. This is a great device. Okay, I would do, do not want to use it today, but you too. You'd go into a saloon. And instead of buying your own glass of wine or mug of beer, they give you a communal big container. And built into the container are these like three or four straws. And a group of people just sit down around it and socially drink and have a really good old time. But, you know, but the, so you're allowed to drink together with a Gentile with one proviso. You have to make sure that you finish sucking before he does. <laughs> because if he finishes sucking with the straw, then there's going to be backwash. And the backwash yeah, that he touched with his mouth is going to go back into the container oh and God. osser the whole thing. Only the first time. 
That's right. Only the first time. Then he's finished. Then he's finished. Uh, right. So it's got, <laughs> right? So, I mean, can you imagine that? I'll drink with you, but uh, just keep drinking. <laughs> as soon as you've finished, I'm finished. i got to pull out before before you. Frat, so, frat, frat party advice. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> so, um, so, uh, so, Rabba Baravuna Ikla Lebe Reish Galusa Shari Lehu Lemishta B'Kanishkenen. So Rabbi Barafuna comes to the house of the Reish Galus, and they ask them that Shaila, can we use the Kanishkanin to let Jews and Gentiles drink together? And he said, yeah, it's okay. And Ika da Amri Rabbi Barafuna gufe ishti be Kanishkanin. And some say that wow. he himself participated. So Tosus asks the Bam Kashi, you got to look at this Tosus with me for just to take another 60 seconds. Tosus says, Tema, hey Hayashosa be Kanishkanin. How could it's like playing Russian roulette? How do, how am I supposed to know that I'm I'm going to finish sucking before he finishes sucking? What happens if he stops sucking and I didn't realize it and I'm going to end up drinking Ainezer? Like how can you take such a risk? So he says, and this is very contrived. I must say that to, I'm not that satisfied with Tosfos's terrets. So he says, Upirish Rach, or some say Rabbi Menachem, Delo Mairi Ima Obi Kolchavim Elisha Yeshosa Im Yisrael B'Kenishkenen. So the answer is, he wasn't permitting to drink with Jews and Gentiles together. He was permitting a group of Jews to drink together. So what's the problem? Vim Tomarim Kain Micah Mashmalan. So what's the problem? The guy grabs a straw. Jewish guy says. So I would have said it's a problem with hi- hygiene. It's hygiene. It's disgusting. <laughs> but that's not the consideration. Tosfa says Yesh Lomar the Kamash Malan de Lomitzer Bizman Hazem Mishum Simcha La Fuki Miman de Osba Masecha Shabbos Lishtos Bikinishkin and Bizman Hazem Peperk Bame Aisha. He says there were some Chachamim who were gozer. That this is this is such a frat party thing to do, that it's aser bizman hazeh because you're not, you're not supposed to have so much simcha, oh, that, because, the, because after, after, after the chorba, oh. so that's the reason why they asered it. So the chiddush was, no, it's I hold you know you can have a good time, you can have a good time as long as you know. So you're not doing this with goyim. You're not doing this with goyim. That's the way Tosfos learns, at least. At least that's the way, I mean, that's the way he's learning the story of Rabbi Rabbi Bar Bar Huna. You should have started drinking. Rabbi Bar Bar Huna. You're not supposed to socialize and drink with In the first place. That was the the whole reason why. It flies in the face of the whole thing. You're right. 